So while I do like making content and I do like doing what I do, I don't like just rapid firing my content at you because it does feel kind of like it, it, you know, like I ain't gonna lie, I do like the idea of retaining consistency, but I'm gonna tell y'all right now, I don't make a video a day and I do have to actually get ready to go to work in a few. So I'm gonna keep this short. Well, not short, but yeah, short. <sighs> Lord knows I don't keep it short. Um, but I did want to have this uh, conversation because I did see the VP debate or bits and pieces of it, and I wanted to talk about it a little bit. And um, first off, I realize now I've been too hard on Republicans. I I always say how much I hate them and how stupid I think they are, and I've been very, very, very rough on Republicans. And I realize now that it's not that I hate them as much as I I feel bad for them a little bit. Because, um, you know, like when you're in a situation where you're looking at it, where everything seems like it's bleak and it's stressful and it's painful, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you do want somebody that is going to help you get out of the situation that you're in. The only problem is, is that you don't want to even acknowledge that that person helped you. You want to be able to say, I did it all on my own. And you can't get help and then say, I did it all by myself. You know what I mean? You can't be like, Trump is going to save us by making us save ourselves. I mean, that, that makes no sense. That, that really, that really makes no sense. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it at all. Yeah, but the fact of the matter is, is that like, the good thing about the VP debate is that one, as, as, as we've said before, we're not voting for the VP. We're not voting for the vice president. And if J.D. Vance got on TV and said that he was going to, like, give every homeless person, like, you know, a home and abolish rent and all this other stuff, I'm still not going to vote for Trump because of that. Notice how I said that I'm not going to vote for Trump, but I didn't say that I was going to vote for Kamala Harris. But you're going to have a whole bunch of conservatives going down to the bottom and basically saying, yeah, that's right. You go ahead and vote for Kamala then because you know, cause yeah, everything's going to go bad and, and you're going to take your gun away and everything's going to be expensive. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like I didn't, I didn't say I was going to vote for her. I just said I'm not voting for Trump. And, you know, like I said. Uh, if you hear loud noises going on outside, just know that I live in a hood and things get a little ridiculous out there. Um, in any case, though, like, um, in any case, though, like, I, um, yeah, I lost my place with that kerfuffle going on outside. But, yeah, though, the, my, my whole thing is that, like, I do genuinely feel bad for Republican voters because, like, they have been basically told for probably as long as they've been alive that things are supposed to go a certain way and any change to that in any way is bad you know what i'm saying that things are supposed to be a certain fashion a certain way a certain you know there's only like certain things that you have to do uh to exist in the right way and if you go against that you're wrong you're bad and you should probably get punished for it that was probably a whole thing about what being a Republican was for them. And now they're starting to see that the things that they were told were bad are in fact not bad. And they're being told that the things that are wrong are in fact not wrong. And rather than sort of accept the fact that the rules are changing and things are moving forward in a, in a good way, they're instead saying, no, we have to go back to how things were because those are the right things to do and and i feel bad for them because for some of these cats there's no change in their minds i'm not and also a fun fact you can't change anybody's mind you just can't you can't change anybody's mind if somebody wants to change their mind you can you can suggest things to them but if somebody wants to change their mind they got to do it on their own i can't stress that enough like, I feel like, you know, you have never heard somebody say, this person changed my mind on this. They'll probably, like, say something along. I'm not going to say you'll never hear that, but I'll say you will rarely hear that. And, you know, because if there's something that you're passionate about, you're going to be passionate about it regardless of what's being presented to you, such as Donald Trump. There's so many things that's basically pointed out to him just not just being a bad president, but just being a bad person. And some of his most loyal, devoted followers are aware of this and are just like, so? 
still better than Kamala. You know what I mean? So this is just things that are like really stressing me out, but I'm not talking, I'm, 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 damn. But the fact that, the reason why I'm talking about this is because the one thing I do like, I, the one thing I did like about the VP debate was how blade, how bland it was. This was like, it, there was no sizzle. There was no glitz. There was no glamor. It was just two, it was just two guys talking. You know what I'm saying? There was like, you know, every so often there was gonna be a couple of snipes and jabs at each other, but it wasn't as bad as a presidential election where you saw the polar differences. You saw the difference in ideologies, difference in perspectives, differences in like temperances and emotional stances and emotional state ways of doing things. You saw that, but in this one, not so much. You know what I mean? And I will say like, you know, and I, and I will say this though, is like, it also shows something that like I forgot was very possible. It's very possible for people to be bipartisan. It's very possible for bipartisanship to be a thing. Like we're not that different. One of the one of the things that like one you know, if you if you grew up around like certain people who think they knew politics, the first thing that they'll say is, see they talking like they against each other, but in reality they agree with each other on a lot of stuff. They don't want you to know that. You know, they gonna tell you that they don't like each other, but they like each other. They best friends outside. You pull back the curtain. But hey, but the, you ain't hear from me though, cause you know like I, if you if you find out that I'm gonna end up getting shot at, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, dude, no, <laughs> you, you you didn't reveal some big old, you did not reveal some big old conspiracy. You're you're fine, calm down. But you know, like you, you know how those guys are. It's like going, you didn't hear from me though. It's like I'm trying, I'm not trying to get killed. Wink. You know what I'm saying? But no, it, but that's not the case here. The fact is, is that we, for a long time, we was always introduced to this idea that, you know, they're, po they're polar opposites. But in reality, they're not. And the VP debate proved that. There's been a lot of times where they say that they agree with each other. And honestly, as as much as the, as much as you want to say Tim Walls suck for agreeing with, uh, with J.D. Vance on certain things, you kind of want that in Congress. Because you have to take into consideration what's happening in Congress right now today. Right now, today, and what's been happening for the past couple of years, there has been nothing but headbutting in Congress for years. The reason why a lot of things have actually been stagnant in America is because there's bills and laws and, and propositions that have been put into not just federal Congress, but state and local Congresses, Congress I, Congri, what's the plural world for Congress? That has been basically in Congress because Congress people have either A, just challenged it outright, B, butt heads about it, or C, only sign it off when it's something that hurts people. Am I right? Every Republican Congress in the country? Mm. But the fact of the matter is, is that like, you know, we're start, but it's like, but we're introduced to this idea that the, but that, that these people are capable of getting along when it comes to certain things and comes to certain, like there's, there, there are, there, not everything is a debate to try to win. Everything can be like just a conversation for compromise. People should be trying to find ways to agree with each other on things. And I also want to take this time to say this too. I, I hate JD Vance a tiny bit less. So, because I don't think that JD, I think that JD Vance is actively sabotaging Donald Trump's uh, uh, Donald Trump's uh, presidential run on purpose. You got to really take into consideration. This dude has been saying a lot of dumb things before the debate. And then he goes on to say just a handful of dumb things during the debate. But he's going to say dumb things after the debate. You know that he will. But the fact of the matter is, is that like, and also he's unlikable, which is weird because imagine being the first vice. Imagine being like you know the the first vice president with a full beard. You literally are a cornerstone in American history now, and you're unlikable. Wow, we have actually now that I think about it, Trump has the president of a lot of firsts. The first president to get like he's the first president to be criminally indicted. He has the most. He has the most impeachments throughout his like he has the most impeachments. First president to ever get indicted, um, and there was another thing too. Most indictments, no, not first president again. First president, uh, the first most impeachments. <laughs> like to put this in perspective, 
Like, in order for you to, like, beat his record, you literally have to get impeached three times in your first term. All this in his first term. I'm sorry. Like, it's like, and not only that, but if he actually, if he wins, let's, God forbid, then his vice president would be the first vice president, first off, with the, universe, like, being universally disliked, and also with a full beard. It's just hilarious to me. But, um, but yeah, though. But, like, the fact of the matter is that, like, it is kind of nice that to see that there was a bit of a bipartisanship that was a bit of a bipartisanship because you see in this thing that jd vance actually approves of him like jd vance actually does approve of tim walls's perspectives a lot also tim walls had a lot of flubs he had a lot of um you know gaffes and misspeaks but honestly screwing up your words i mean dude we all screw up when we talk there's people who have a YouTube account who don't make content because they are genuinely afraid of A, how they sound, and B, what they'll actually say. So they don't so they, so they don't make content. It's like, you know, my shame is my own. But but Walls is out here, he's about to he could be possibly, you know, vice he could be vice president. And he flubbed up a few times. And he's still a cool he's still a cool dude. I I I reckon. So you know, like he just come across as he comes across as a normal guy, whereas uh, JD Vance comes across as a uh, uh, like JD Vance comes across as a smug idiot, a little bit. So you know, there's that. Also, I don't like to think that these debates are something to win or lose. I think it's an uh, I think it's just an introduction to who these people are. But the thing is, we knew who they were already. We have an idea who they are. We know who Tim Walls is. We know who JD Vance is. You know, I did. Of course, of course, I expected JD Vance to do well. He's a writer. He's a writer. Writers write good, so they can. So there's a good chance they talk good too. You know, so like, hey, I mean, like, yeah, it's expected. But like, I'm still not going to be okay with the fact that this dude somehow managed to, to make, like, illegal immigrants a core concern and a core problem in this country. I don't like the I don't like my my issue with another issue that I have with Republicans is simply that uh, they say on a regular they they love talking about illegal immigrants but to me that just translates to colored folk I don't like the idea because it's like you never you, they never you ever notice how Republicans don't talk about immigrants from Ukraine or from Europe or from Canada every single time they talk about illegal immigrants is always Mexico or Haiti or Jamaica. You know, a place where there's the popularity is mostly like black people or brown people. You never really hear about like you never hear those dirty Canadian immigrants. You never hear that phrase. You know what I mean? So it's like it's very clear to me that their idea of illegal immigrants is it all comes back to it all comes back to just racism and white supremacy to me. So and also not enough right there's not enough right wing brainwashing in the world that's gonna make me think that a, a black or brown person from another country is somehow a bigger threat to me than a white supremacist here in America. There's no no amount like you can't you you're not going to convince me of that. So so you're saying that white people are dangerous? No, I said white supremacists are dangerous. And I made a video, I made a couple of videos about what my my perspective of white supremacy a while ago. So if you so if that if you still think that white supremacy means white people then you didn't care about my videos to watch them or you're just perpetuating misinformation just to make me look like a bad person so you can say see he he said the thing and that's you that's you buddy um but yeah i don't like this uh, i don't like uh but i saw the vice presidential debate like i i wish i would like for american politics to be as boring and as bland as that again because people don't like focusing on politics but we do like the idea of politics not being a show it's been a circus for quite some time now and we have white supremacists to thank for that so the way i see it is if donald trump doesn't win is a big blow to white supremacy and maybe white and and you know weak and the weekend white supremacy is a strengthened america a weekend white, uh, like you know, white supremacy losing is a win for America because if you go back into American history, that's basically all it's ever been: America versus white supremacy, and America's won at least a good four times now. 
Also, at some point, I'm going to talk about fiction, and I'm going to talk about the fact that we need, like, you know, like, we need a, 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 a completely cinematic uh, take on American history. I'm talking, like, go back as far as we can from, like, you know, before, like, during the colonial times and the Native American people, and then just go into today. We need that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like first off, it would be an awesome show. Like, we could all watch it. But we could all watch it. And also, there will be a lot of bias. There will be a lot of controversy. But people will talk about it. Like, we, re the best way to get people to learn things is through TV shows. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm just saying, like, imagine all the cool stuff that we could be able to talk. Like, history is literally the great, the most entertaining thing ever, in my opinion. You can have... You you can have the Harlem Renaissance, the 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 French and Indian War, the um the uh, um uh, the, the the Gold Rush. You could have, you know, uh, all of the historic black cities like Seneca Village and Tulsa, and Seneca Village and Tulsa and Rosewood and all these other things. You I mean at some point you will have to visit slavery, which is gonna probably be like the worst part of that show. But at some point we also have to take into consideration that slavery wasn't the only thing that was happening in that in that time frame. There was also stuff that was going on in the northern states as well. There was stuff that was going like it we have a lot to go into. Like I'm pretty we like if we can have historical shows dedicated to Catherine the Great or the uh the Royals or uh, what is it that one? What's that one show? The show about the shogun, the, the the samurai. If we could have shows about all that, why can't we have one dedicated to crazy moments in American history as well? How, where's our show about the uh, the Revolutionary War? Where's our show dedicated to the Harlem Renaissance? Where's our shows dedicated to just the White House? I'm ranting, I'm rambling, but that that's probably for another video. We'll talk about that later. And, but yeah, like the VP debate, I mean, like nobody won, nobody lost. We got a chance to see bipartisanship in full effect. And, um, but like nobody's vote. You're not voting for the VP. You're not voting for the VP. You're voting for the president. Let that be the focus. All right, y'all. Love and peace.